Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. So today we are going to do the tutorial for my little mini that I called Minimum Supplies Mini Album um, because we use just that, Minimal Supplies. Um, this was the challenge or request. Um, somebody said, can you make a book that um, for people who are just starting out in crafting and may not have all the supplies, all the punches and the fancy things, um, so this book, um, I did the walkthrough and told you everything that I used. Um, this paper collection is photo play moments in time. I did the haul video on that. So if you want to see each page up close and personal, definitely check out the haul video. Um, this was my design team project for country craft creations and everything in here can be purchased at country craft creations, including my adhesive. So for this book here, I used all art glitter glue because that's what I had. Um, I forgot to bring my score tape. So, oh, that made it worse. I thought that would make it better. Well, um, I forgot to bring my score tape, so I only used art glitter glue. I will show you um, both ways um, using art glitter glue and or score tape. Okay, so you're gonna need three pieces of 12 by 12 paper. I highly recommend the Artisan cardstock, the linen cardstock from countrycraftcreations.com. Why? Because it's quality cardstock and um, you can get other cardstock, but I feel, especially as a beginner crafter, um, you need quality paper. It's less frustrating. Okay, that's my rant on that. Okay, so I'm going to cut these with you guys just so you can see in real time how long this takes. Um, I am a little bit under the weather. My niece was sick with a cough and now I have it. So sorry um, in advance because I know it's coming. Um, okay, so <coughs> excuse me. So what we're going to need are the following. Have some clips available, whether you have these little clips that I got for a dollar. I got like 12 for a dollar or you have like clothespins or paper clips, something to keep everything together because I'm going to do all the cuts first and then we're going to do the scoring. Um, I had actually already did the tutorial halfway done and I realized I was not recording. So <laughs> here we go. Okay. So, um, I'm using my paper trimmer and my scoreboard. Again, you can buy, actually, I think paper trimmer is the only thing you can't buy on the website. Um, you can buy scoreboards. I would say. Um, so oh, why is this so shaky? Okay, so our first piece of cardstock, you're going to need four pieces of three by 10. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and do the 10 inch cut mark first. So I'm gonna cut that. You're gonna keep this because we're actually gonna use this piece here. Flip it and we're two, three inches. So three by 10, one, Three by ten, two, three by ten, three, and three by ten here. This, I don't know. See how, like, sometimes you mismeasure and you have this little thing. These pages are important to be exactly three by ten. Um, that's why I always measure. And, you know, the paper's cut by a machine, so it may not have even been 12 inches. It may have been 12 and an eighth inch. I don't know. So I always measure. So, but here are my four pieces, three by 10. Okay. We're going to set those aside. You can label these base page. I always write in the middle because you're going to cover that with paper. So, okay. Then we need uh, two pieces that are six by two. Huh? Guess what? This is two inches. We're just going to cut it at six. Um, and these are actually pockets. So you can label them pockets if you want. Okay. And then next we need a piece of paper um, that is three by seven and a half. So I'm going to go ahead and cut three inches here. Cause 
So we're trying to use, we're trying to conserve paper. Because, you know, not everyone has a budget that they can replenish their card stock. So, you know, I'm trying to use every single piece. So three by seven and a half. Yeah. Okay. Save this piece. On this piece, I want you to write hinge. Okay. Yes, my G's look like S's. <laughs> they do. Okay, so that's going to be your hinge piece. Um, this is your extra. We're going to use this for um, tags and stuff. So you're just going to leave that to the side. Next, you need four pieces that are two and three fourths by four and a quarter. So we're going to cut four and a quarter. And how I made this is that I, I started off with, I did the base pages first. And then I just used the scraps as I went along. And whatever fit, that's how I made it. So we're going to cut four and a quarter. I always triple check my measurements. Well, not always, and y'all see on some of my videos, I don't, and I have to recut. <laughs> okay, and then two and three fourths. So two and three fourths. One, two and three fourths. Two, two and three fourths. Three, and two and three fourths. Four. Okay, these four little things, these are your um, inserts. So like your um, your pieces in here. Oops. Oh man, this sticker does not want to stick. Okay, so we'll put inserts on this one. You can call them mats or whatever, but I call them inserts because I you insert them in the top. Okay, and then you need two pieces that are four by three. Um, this should be, um, this is, yeah. I'm trying to remember how I cut this. Okay, so we're just going to cut this four. And then um, by three. So we need two of these. So four by three and four by three. Um, these are actually our, our half pockets. So we're just going to put um, half pocket. Well, they're going to be like faux envelope things, but half pockets. Those are the four by threes. And then you need two that are four by two and seven eighths. So the same page, two and seven eighths. That's a tick mark right before the three. And two and seven eighths. Okay. Obviously we don't need this little tiny, you can toss that. Okay, so these are actually our flaps. So the four by two and seven eighths, we're going to put flaps on those. Okay. Those are all the cuts that we need right now. Super simple. Um, let's see. Let me get my scoreboard. You can use your paper trimmer with your scoring um, blade if you want. You can use a ruler and a bone folder however you want. I'm using my scoreboard. And first what we need to do is take those base pages, the three by tens, and we're going to score them at five. These are our base pages, okay? So score at five. Five. Normally I would just line them all up and then go down, but so you guys can see it. Five and five. Okay. So they should all be even. Okay. We'll come back to those. So just you know clip those back. Next one that we are scoring is 
the the four by threes are half pockets. So get your half pockets, the four by threes. And we are scoring those at a half an inch on two long sides and one short. So this was my happy accident. We're doing this little half pocket right here. And the reason why I call it a half pocket is because this side is open. And with a pocket, you usually have three sides closed. And this one, I only have two. Um, so I, if you want this faux envelope look, um, I just really like This was a happy accident. I scored the half an inch on the top and bottom, which I only needed on the bottom, but I just really liked how this looked when I folded it over. So if you want it exactly like mine, then do um, score half an inch on both top, bottom, and one of the sides. Um, if you don't want this, then don't score it. It'll be too big. You'll have to cut it off. Okay. See what I'm saying? So on the short side, we're going to score at a half. and at two and a half. Okay. Then on the long side, we're going to score at a half. Got it. So half, two and a half, or excuse me, half, just half an inch, flip it, half an inch and two and a half. So basically you're just scoring half an inch on three sides, two long sides, one short. Okay. So we are going to, um, miter these corners real quick. So, um, for the pockets, you can, um, I just choose the diagonal. I know some people like to cut the square out, but for pockets, I don't like to do that. I just do the diagonal and then flip it over and do the other. Or whatever. I think I cut that one too much. Oh well. Okay. And then do the same. So you're just basically cutting in that X. Okay. So. We'll come back to those. Those are our half pockets. Where's my clip? Okay. And then we have our flaps. These were the um, four by two and seven eighths. So we're just going to squirt a half an inch on the long side, half an inch and half an inch. Um, I like the half an inch measurements. I think it's easier to work with. You can make them smaller um, if you want, but the half an inch measurements, it's easy to math, um, especially when you're making pockets because you just add an inch to whatever size your page is, um, and that's the length of the pocket. So it's just easier to math. Okay, so I think that's, oh no, we have to score our hinge. Okay, here's our hinge piece. Um, I scored them at weird measurements. I don't know why, but I did. Okay, so one and a quarter, one and three fourths. The, basically, I chose these measurements is because um, Tammy always starts at one and a quarter, so I always start at one and a quarter, whether I leave that quarter of an inch in or not, which this one or not. Um, but also on my scoreboard, I just know to go at every line and dot. So that's what works out for me. So one and a quarter, uh, one and three fourths, two and a quarter, two and three fourths, um, three and a quarter, three and three fourths, four and a quarter, four and three fourths, five and a quarter, five and three fourths, six and a quarter, six and three fourths. That's it. So the quarter, three fourths, 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 quarter, three fourths. That's it. And that's all we're doing with our hinge. Okay. All right. And you can use um, Tammy's new adjustable hinge if you would like. 
this is the beginner hinge, so I stuck with it. And because our pages are not um, super embellished, um, you know, we don't need to do that. So um, I was trying to figure out if there's a better way I can show you how to put the score tape on, which we can. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So you can do the hinge with score tape or with glue. When I originally did it, I did it with just glue because that's what I had. I forgot my score tape at home, but now I have score tape. So um, we can go ahead and make the hinge. So here's a super easy way to do it. Um, if you're going to use score tape, you're going to put it on the first half an inch mark. I'll show you the pencil. Where is it? If you put the larger side to the left, here's my score line. Well, sorry, I can't draw a straight line even though there's a template here. Okay, so I put score tape here. I'm going to skip to score tape, skip to score tape, skip to score tape. Okay, um, if you're using glue, then... I will show you because I'm going to use score tape. Um, I can do glue. Okay. So what I like to, this is just how I like to do it. I just fold that first one down and then back up. I always keep the big piece. It's going to be the left. Okay. So these first two, um, half, half an inch, that's going to be my mountain. So it's going to look like this. Okay, that's where you want to put your glue or your score tape. So we'll take it one at a time. So I'm going to take my score tape off and I'm going to close it. Okay, so now it looks like this. This next one is our gusset. So we don't want to do anything with that. Um, what I like to do, because I know that's going to be a gusset, is I just fold up on that one. Um, just to, you know, give that line a crease. And then I'm ready for my next two hinges. So I'm just going to pop them up. Like so. Okay. And that's where I put my square tape. And close it. Okay. So that's using a square tape. Now my next one is my gusset, so again I'm just going to fold up on that line and then take my next two half an inches and I'm going to make those a mountain. Okay, um, that's where you would put your score tape, see how I have it marked, but we'll use glue for this one. Um, for me, there's um, no preference between glue and score tape. Um, I feel the art glitter glue is the same strength as a score tape. The only thing is that it takes, you know, a second or two to dry where score tape is instant. Um, so usually when I'm doing tutorials, I will um, use score tape because it's faster. But in this case, I want to show you that you can, you know, some people may only have the glue because, you know, that's what's in their budget. Okay, so the next one is the gusset. So I'm just going to pop that up on itself. And then the next two are my um, mountain. And we're going to go ahead and glue that. All right. Perfect. So now you have something that looks like this. Okay. Okay, so it should have worked out. Um, what we're going to do is fold this last piece over and this piece over, but we're making sure we don't affect our hinges. We want our four hinges to stay up. This one I did not opt to keep any extra on the sides. Sometimes I do. I like the look of that, but this one I did not. Um, I just didn't, honestly. I don't know why. Okay. Um, so we're just going to glue those down. It gives the spine a little bit more strength, stability. Um, you can score tape it.
Again, making sure your hinges are not affected by that because if you pull it too tight, your hinges are going to be wonky. So just, you know, make sure you don't pull it too tight. That's why I, I, this part I prefer using glue because in case I pull it too tight, I can lift it up. So we'll just make sure that that is glued in. Um, so a lot of people ask, do I do the hinge first? Um, because I'm not a huge embellisher, I do my hinges first because I know I'm not going to have a lot of chunk on my page um, because I just don't know how to embellish. Um, well, it's not that I don't know how. I just i am not an expert at it. Um, but if you are um, a, a heavy embellisher, I would wait because you may need your gussets to be um, three quarters of an inch instead of half an inch or however wide you need it. Okay, so I'm going to leave my hinge there. So I think that's all of the scoring that we need to do so we can go ahead and start the book. So first what we need to do is take our base pages. This is where I like to use eighth of an inch score tape. I know this isn't score tape, but every double-sided tape I call score tape, so that's what we're going with, score tape. Um, we're just going to take those base pages and fold them, you know, where we scored them at five, and burnish. You can use your glue for this. Um, it's just if you want to have accurate inserts, um, score tape would be your best bet, but I will show you two and two one with or two with um, tape and two with what you call glue okay all right um, and Tammy does have the best score tape bundles um, on her page they are the cheapest and I'm a I'm a budget crafter so I looked around and um, hers are the cheapest so even if it's by cents, hey, I need my my eight cents. <laughs> That's eight cents I could be using for something else. And shipping is not um, is not bad at all. Okay, so if you're using square tape, you're just gonna run that little piece along the bottom. If you're using glue, you gotta wait. So I'll show you the glue. Um, no, I'm gonna show you square tape first. Okay, so if you're using all score tape, then you need to put score tape just through something on your um, hinges. So I score tape it to the top, so that way you you're guaranteed not to touch that bottom score line. Um, so you do not want to touch that bottom score line. So do not use your half an inch score tape. You want to use your three eighths of an inch or your quarter of an inch would be fine um, because you don't want to go anywhere near that bottom score mark. I mean, it's not a tragedy if you do, don't tear it up, but um, your book will just be harder to open. The pages um, will be hard to turn. So I'm doing two with score tape and two with glue. I have to remind myself or else I'll just do all of it with score tape. And again, this has nothing to do with strength. It's just convenience, honestly. And if you're making several of these books, I would definitely suggest using score tape in the assembly method. You can just put all your score tape on, you know, make, like say you're making six of these. Put all your score tape on all six hinges. Keep them moving. Glue is going to take time. Okay. If you are still shaky with your score tape, take your handy dandy um, Elmer's oh one of my light bulbs went out that's why it's so dark um, Elmer's school glue stick and when you peel off the um, this backing you just rub a little bit of score tape or score tape <coughs> excuse me oh my gosh you just rub a little bit of school glue over the score tape and it gives you an extra second or two. So what you're going to do is peel the backing of your score tape. And I just hold it on the other side with my finger. 
and um, oh my gosh, and you're just going to connect the two. Again, um, this I like using the 3H and score tape because it gives me um, that line to show me where not to go. So wherever there's no score tape, you don't put your um, paper. Does that make sense? All right, because you do not want to get that score line. In there, so I have like about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe eighth of an inch. Um, we're going to do the same here. Um, line up the top and stick it down. Okay, and now we're just going to pull the rest of our score tape and lay it down. Make sure we have the adhesion onto the next one. I usually only Elmer glue. Um, the first one, just so I have a little bit of wiggle room. Okay. Making sure you know which one's the top and which one's the bottom, because that's going to determine if your pages have pockets on the top or if they don't. Because if you put it on the wrong, uh, wrong side, um, then, um, you can have to seal your pages. Or you can have every other one as a pocket page. There's no mistakes in crafting because nobody knows but you what it was supposed to be originally. Okay, so this one I peeled the whole bottom off because I was talking. It's not a tragedy. I just have to be careful. Okay, and let me fill this. I just have to be careful that I don't set this bottom down um, on that in case it doesn't line up because sometimes I don't measure correctly. Okay, so line that up there, and now I can smooth it, okay. So, so far my pages, hooray, the tops are correct. Okay, glue method. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put some glue here. Again, being very careful not to get that bottom score line. I'm going to put this on. If you're lining it up with your previous pages, it should be fine. Um, again, making sure that glue does not seep out onto that score line. If it does, you need to wipe it immediately. Um, okay. This one, you got to be very careful when you're doing this edge. Now, the reason why I say that is because um, if you use glue, then your measurements may be a little bit off for the inserts, and you'll just have to trim them down. Um, so... If you have the art glitter glue, it comes with the metal tip. The metal tip would be perfect here to give you that eighth of an inch glue. Oh, you know, I didn't even check if that was the top or the bottom. Okay, good. I did it right. Okay, so kind of pull down so the glue comes out the bottom and doesn't go up the top. And then while it's still a little bit wet, just get in here, scribble on that hinge like so and there you go be careful don't get on that score line um, a lot of people like to decorate their pages before they put it on their hinge um, if I am following a tutorial I will look and see what the final result is and then that will determine if I decorate before or after but again this book is not heavily embellished so I'm gonna go ahead and do it before it's all just a preference thing. There's no right or wrong uh, answer. It's just a preference. Okay. And sometimes if you put the pages on the hinges, that tells you, hey, too bad, so sad, you can't embellish that much. So there you go. Okay, again, see how much more careful I have to be with glue. Score tape, I just slap it on. Okay, make sure these are the tops and the tiny little bit and with art glitter glue uh, less is more you do not need a ton of this glue so it'll last you a while um, I do a lot of books and I've only gone through maybe um, 12 ounces in a year maybe 16 I can't remember I used two eight ounce or an eight ounce and a four ounce bottle. 
So, and like this one, I've already done four projects with, and it's only down to here where the pink is. So this is the two ounce bottle. I brought that with me because it was easier. And if it burst open, I only lost two ounces as opposed to the bigger bottles. So, okay. So our um, base pages are done. Next, we're going to go ahead and put our pockets in. So we need our pieces that were two by six, the ones that we labeled pockets. And you know what? We did not score these. Oopsies. Sorry. Okay. Actually, you know what? What I'm going to do is trim these down. So I'm actually going to make these five and seven eighths just so they fit better. Um, so just trim it down. I'm going to, the measurements in the box will be correct. Um, um, you can leave it at the six by two, but this way it will just make it just, it'll fit even better. Um, so we're going to score it at a half an inch on two short sides, one long. So score half an inch, score half an inch, and score half an inch. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cut this down to uh, five and seven eighths. It's a tick mark before the six. It is an eighth of an inch piece off. We're going to do half an inch. Flip it half an inch. That way you guys can see that you can do it on your scoreboard or paper trimmer. Half an inch. If you don't have the scoring blade, you can use your bone folder and get in there and do that half an inch. You can use um, the pen thing that I use, which I don't know what I did with it. Um, this thing. Um, yeah. Okay, so these ones we need to go ahead and miter our corners here. Um, some people like to cut the um, the squares out, but for pockets, I don't cut the squares out. I just eyeball a diagonal. That's cool. Diagonal. Diagonal. Diagonal and diagonal. So basically, you just want your scissors to hit that um, the X from your two square marks is what you need to do. Right. Okay. Let's go ahead and varnish because I just totally forgot about these pockets. These are two of the main pages. So we're just varnishing. Pockets, I, um, again, glue or score tape, don't matter. If I'm doing a ton of them, score tape. If I'm just doing one, glue. Okay, so we are doing this page here. So it's this pocket. Okay, so yeah, you can see, so we're doing it on the front and on the, the back page. Okay, so that's where those two go. So we're just going to go ahead and scribble on some glue. Easy with the squeezy. And we're going to go ahead and make sure our top is on top, our open ends are on top. And we're just going to go ahead and glue this. Now this, I like to leave about an eighth of an inch. Um, around my pocket or 16 of an inch. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. I just like to show the base color paper. Okay, we're gonna varnish that and make sure that glue is adhered. Get in there. See, I was talking too much and I don't think I, uh, my glue may have dried before I put it down. Yep. So if your glue dries before you're done talking, hey, look at this, just add more. It happens, people. It happens. Okay. There's that. And we're going to do our other one. I'll score tape it so you can see there's virtually no difference. 
Um, but again, if you're making multiple and you have score tape, it's easier just to score tape them all. Like I just work on all pockets first and then all flaps and then all whatever. Okay. Making sure that's adhered. And so here's the thing, like when I'm doing this on my own, I still talk to myself like I'm talking to y'all right now. Why? Because you just remember, I feel you remember the steps easier if you say it out loud. I don't know if that's true or not, but or maybe I'm just crazy. I'm not talking to myself. That's a possibility. All right. So um, I flipped it over to the last page. I'm going to make sure the top is the top. And yes, I'm going to say that 8,000 times because trust me, you know how many times I followed a tutorial and I know it has to be a certain way and I don't put it that certain way. Yeah, you know how annoying that is? So that's why I say it 500 times. Okay, make sure that is adhered in there. Boom. Okay, so we have front page and we have back, back page. Next, we're going to do these two pages. And so we have our flap and our faux envelope. So we need our flaps. These were the two and seven eighths by four, I think. Um, you're going to score tape that quarter of an inch. Again, not getting on that score line. Varnish, 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 always. It's just basically breaking down the fibers of the paper and you're manipulating it, telling it, hey, I'm boss, you stay down. So we're going to um, open it and this is our flat. Make sure there's no overhang. And what I mean by that is make sure your score tape is not longer than your paper. And you're going to kind of center it. It gives you a 16th of an inch on top and bottom. Show a little bit of white. Doesn't matter if you don't get it. That one I didn't get it in the center, but it's that tiny little bit. No one's going to care. This is where you can use your corner rounders, your scallop edge, your ticket stub punch. If you have them, you can use it there if you want. I thought it was cute with just with the rectangle and I didn't have my punches with me because I have the um, corner chompers and they're heavy. And my suitcase was exactly at 50 pounds. So that would have thrown me over. Okay, so we're gonna do our next one. This one we're gonna do in glue. So we're gonna go ahead and varnish that. And it's going to be um, not this next page, not the middle, because the middle we're just leaving blank in the next page. Okay. Again, I'm just going to make sure my top. Yeah. So, same way as we did the score tape, we're just using glue. Boom. So these books do not take this long. I'm just really showing, you know, beginners how to do it. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the faux envelope half pocket, whatever I called it, half pocket. Um, same thing, you're just going to varnish those score marks, three sides at half an inch. Um, so this one, I kind of cut super wonky. So that's going to be the bottom because you're not going to see it. So you just want to make sure that your small tab is going to go to the left. Okay, does that make sense? So originally I had it this way, but because I cut it some type of bad, I got to flip it over. And it's going to be like this. So this is where if you want this faux envelope look, you're going to just um, take this top score mark um, and you're going to just miter this other corner like so. If you want it square or excuse me, rectangle, then um, leave it rectangle and you wouldn't have mitered in the beginning. Or if you don't like it at all, cut it off. Okay. Um, so... This one because I, I don't know what in the world I did with that. I'm going to use score tape on this one. 
and we'll do glue on the other. Somebody asked me to show both, so that's why I'm showing you both. In case you're wondering. Or for those of you who know me, probably just like, mm, that's just her. Being weird. I stay on the weird side. It's more fun. Right. So we're going to take our backing off. And we are going to put our pocket here. If you accidentally put your score tape on the wrong side, um, then your pocket will just go to the right. Who cares? Your opening will be on the left instead of the right. Doesn't matter. Still beautiful. So I put score tape on the back of mine, um, and then I matted it, and then I score taped it down. Um, you can um, just glue it down after you mat. If you glue it down first, it's going to be hard to mat. So um, just remember that you're just going to leave that alone for right now. Okay. So now we're going to go back to that other page with the flap and do the other pocket. So back to this page, do the other. Okay. So fold, 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 varnish. It doesn't matter which way you fold the piece you're going to use for the faux envelope because you're just going to fold it the other way. So I like this miter and better, so that's going to be my top. Um, I'm going to miter this one here. Maybe a little bit more, a little bit more angle. Okay, so that's going to be my flip down. Um, and I'm just going to rub some glue on here. Some people use glue stick. I don't know. I definitely would not use a Elmer school stick. Well, you know what? I've seen people do it in videos and um, it's fine, but I don't know if I trust that. I mean, it took me a while to do glitter glue for like my my hinges and my spines just because, you know, we were all top score tape, score tape, score tape. Um, but now, I like I said, I use either. Okay, make sure that's it here. Get up in there. Okay. Right, and we're gonna put our little piece of score tape. Again, you can, after you mat this piece, glue this down. You don't have to score tape it. Okay, um, is that it? Because our middle piece is blank. That's it, so um, our book is done. Those inserts are just that. They're going inside here. Um, what I did is I used pieces, I, I kept this long piece right here, um, and I cut these tabs. I left this one unmatted so you can kind of, oh wait, that's not a good example. I was trying to remember my measurements for the hinge, and so I just used this piece. It doesn't matter. Um, I just cut out little rectangles to make the pool tabs, and then um, I laid them down flat. Let me show you what I'm on about. There should be four. Um, two, three, four. Yeah. I just laid them down flat and just made them, you know, so they were staggered. That's all I did. You can use your, if you have the, um, the file punch, you can do that. If you have the um, uh, die cuts that do that, if you have, you could actually buy them. Uh, just the tabby things at Walmart, if you wanted to, but why spend money when you can make it? Um, okay, so that is it for the book. And um, if you need to know how to cover the chipboard, um, stay tuned. If you don't need to know, then thanks for watching. And, um, I hope you make a whole bunch of these books for Christmas gifts. Um, so you guys can shut it off now. If you don't need help with how to cover your um, chipboard to make this part here, you can go ahead and turn it off. Um, for those of you who need the extra reminder, or if you're like me, you're laying in bed and just don't feel like turning off the video, you can listen. How about that? 
So for this, I used a graham cracker box because I trash picked in my mom's recycle bin. So you can use that. You can use chipboard. Um, yeah, anything you want the chipboard in country craft creation is a great chipboard. Um, I, that's the only chipboard I use, but we will use a cereal box so you guys can see. Um, honestly, you can, you know, put a couple of sheets of the artisan cardstock together and that will work too, but, um, we're going to use cereal box. So hold on one second. Let me grab it. Okay. So you see it's legit a cereal box. Um, Frosted Flakes and the Kellogg cereals, they're usually a little bit thicker, so I like to use those more so than um, any other brands. What I do is I just um, cut the flaps off with scissors. I usually use my guillotine chopper. Um, but not everyone has that, so we're going to do it with our scoreboard. Um, if you don't have one of the heavy-duty um, scoreboards, or excuse me, um, paper trimmers, um, I suggest you designate one blade for chipboard and one blade for paper cutting because chipboard is going to dull your blade, but a dull blade will still cut nicely through chipboard, but it will not cut nicely through paper, um, if that makes sense. So what I like to do is just straighten it up because I know my cutting is not the best. Okay. So now I have some straight edges. Um, let me do this side too because I know. Okay, there we go. All right. So the chipboard for the cover, I use three and a quarter by five and a quarter. Um, I don't think I can get two. Oh yeah, I can. All right, so I'm gonna go at five and a quarter by three and a quarter. Mm, that's not really a good edge. Three and a quarter and three. And a quarter. Okay. So there's those two pieces. And then you need to measure um, your spine to see what size spine piece you need. So I need one and one, three, five. One and five eighths. Yeah. So it's the tick mark after the um, half. I mean, you can just go one and three fourths if you want to, but I'm going to go one and five eighths because I know where that is on my trimmer. One, three, five. And again, I'm, I'm just going to make sure that this um, edge is even. It didn't look like it was. No, oh, no, it was. It was just me. Okay. One, three, five. One and five eighths. Something's wrong with this edge. I don't know. Okay, so one and five eighths to cover. You can give it a little bit more room if you want. I just do mine exact. It doesn't matter which way you do it, honestly. And then by it's the short way, so by three and a fourth. Okay, so there's that. Right. Um, this is where we do need our third piece of paper. We're gonna bring that in, and we need it at. Um, four and a fourth because our, our measurement is three and a fourth. I like an inch around. So we need to add two inches. So we need six and a fourth, right? Actually, I think I only cut it at six. 
so that way I could use two sheets. I didn't have to use two sheets of paper. That's what it was. Okay, so cut it at six and yeah, that's plenty. Yeah, because I didn't want the measurements to be super difficult, so I just cut them at six. Um, there's more exact ways to do this, but um, this gives me more than an inch on top and bottom. So you can do it. So you can do it at five and a half if you want it to, but I'm good with this. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and tape two pieces together. You can glue two pieces together. Um, that's your preference. You can cut the second piece down and make it exact and blah, blah, blah. But I don't have time for that. So I just did quarter of an inch tape. You can do bigger if you want. doesn't matter. You have plenty of extra. And we're just going to connect them. Again, use your glue if you want to. Okay, so we just have this long, big, this big piece. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of eyeball it where I want it to go. You're going to kind of center it. If you need exact, um, you can center it using your Tim Holtz ruler or um, however you want, but I don't need exact. I'm going to glue. You can glue or score tape your first piece down. Basically, you just want an inch all around so you can just wrap it. That's the rocket science behind it. If you have more, you have more. You just don't want less because you want to make sure you're completely covered. So I'm just going to eyeball it to about here. That looks right to me. Okay, and we're just going to make sure we... Um, that glues here. Again, you can use your square tape all around. Some people still do square tape on the perimeter, or glue in the middle. I just do art all glue. Um, some people freak out because you can see the art glue glue while it's wet, but once it dries, you can't see it. Okay. Um, next, um, you can eyeball an eighth of an inch, which would be about that. Or if you have your score tape, you can um, cut your eighth of an inch score tape down. Um, and that's an exact eighth of an inch. Or you can take your pencil and ruler and mark eighth of an inch. Um, I usually just eyeball, but for smiles and giggles, I will use score tape. You don't want any less than an eighth of an inch. Some people do quarter of an inch. I just, my books are floppy when I do quarter of an inch. So um, if you are a heavy embellisher, you may want a quarter of an inch. I don't know. This also gives you a guide um, to line it up straight if you use the score tape. So there's that. Um, if I use a score tape, sometimes I'll take the backing off, sometimes not, only because I don't um, put, some people like to put another piece of cardstock over the top of their chipboard. I don't, I just put the paper down. Uh, like there's no behind this bird paper. There's no um there's no paper. I don't mind that, so I don't do it. Okay. And sometimes I don't put a full piece of designer paper all the way. That's why I don't put um if I'm if I'm paper piecing like Sam just using scraps, I won't take the backing off the score tape because I don't want it to be sticky. Um if you do take the backing off and your paper doesn't cover it, you got to put like glitter or something on it to um, make it so it's not sticky or baby powder or something. Okay. So, um, yeah. You do that. Okay. There we go. And then our next one, we'll glue that down. Sorry, I'm getting ready to go to the movies and I didn't even realize what time it was. 
Um, so they are just texting me. Oopsies. Not ready. We're almost done, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so as you can see, you really did not need this big, massive piece of paper. You only needed this little bit. Um, this is how I like to do it because I don't mind if the seam is in the middle of the back page. I could care less. Um, some people will um, shift all this over so that way the seam is in the middle of the spine. Um, sometimes I'll do that, sometimes not. For me, this didn't matter because I covered it all anyway. Like you guys cannot see where that seam is. I will point it out. It is right here, right there. So unless I point it out, you couldn't really see it. Um, so I'm okay with that. And then you can use your, um, your scissors or your paper trimmer and just trim off that extra. And you're gonna keep that extra because that's what you're gonna use for more tags. Um, if you fussy cut stickers, um, you can use this as backing, but um, yeah. So now what we're gonna do is go ahead, oops, I didn't know, varnish this, and it yelled at me. Okay, so now we're just gonna go ahead and manipulate our paper. We're gonna train our paper so that way it gets used to folding around this chipboard. We don't want any cracking. If it cracks, honestly, it's okay because you just throw a little art glitter glue on it and um, no one can tell. That's why I like this paper because it's textured, so um, you don't see cracks. And it rarely cracks. Like only time I've ever seen it crack is um, on the seam, and that's just because you have a lot of bulk and you're manipulating it. So it's not because of the quality of the paper; it's because of what you're doing. Um, I'm very heavy-handed crafter, so I honestly see a lot of cracking at the seam. But um, again, it's no big deal because it's only, you only see it for a second. Okay, so I'm gonna trim off a little bit more on this side. You only need about an inch. It's easier to work with. Um, and I'm probably gonna trim a little bit here. You don't have to do this part. Just for me, it's easier to work with. And again, I'm not even caring if it's straight or not. That's fine. So essentially it's gonna go up like that and then the piece is in. Um, there's no right or wrong whether you start with the long size or the short side. There's no right or wrong. So for this, you can cut out the square. Um, I suggest this method. It's easier, especially for beginners. Or you can eyeball guess and miter. Or if you have one of those fancy mitering tools, use that. But I don't have a fancy mitering tool and I'm uh, bad at eyeballing. So, cause like pockets, um, it doesn't matter, but your cover, it matters because you need to make sure that that corner is covered. And if you cut too much off when you diagonal miter, then you you got a paper piece and it's just more work. So just cut the square. Okay. And see how I like cut this all wonky. It's fun. I just needed that top part. So when I layer, it looks like I put, um, uh, cardstock all around, which I did not. This one, I think I am going to put the middle piece in. So I'll just doo -doo -doo, take that off. Um, this glue works great. I'm going to do both, I guess. I'll do both in one and glue on the other. Cause again, it doesn't matter. It's just time which I don't have a lot of right now. Because it's 6.02 and I was supposed to be ready at six. And I'm not even dressed yet. I'm still in my jammies. Oopsies. Okay, right. So you wanna make sure you get glue in this little crack. That also prevents um, cracking. So we're just gonna go ahead and, I just go for it. I don't try to do inch by inch, I just go for it and then smooth it out. I found that if I overthink it, that's when it starts getting wonky. And then just kind of see how heavy handed I am. I'm, I'm super hard on the paper. 
So we just need to make sure that we're folding it. Um, this is where glue sometimes is annoying because if that glue is not dry, it is going to bubble, which it's, I mean, it's fine. No one's going to see it, but um, I forgot to tell you that. Let it dry before you start manipulating it. Okay, other one we're just going to use glue only because we can. Don't need that much. Easy on squeezy. And again, I just go for it. This is where you need to either use your paper clips or just keep lining your bone folder to make sure that it stays because it's all glue, so nothing's really holding it down. And then again, just kind of manipulate it up. And then this one. That way you don't have those bubble marks. And do it on this top as well. And on this one. Right, so um, blue. And okay. You can miter the corners now that you know it's going to fit, but um you got to be careful on that. What you're looking out for is this corner right here because you don't want to have naked chipboard. No naked chipboard. Okay. Just mine. Um, so see, it's, it's great either with flat or miter. <coughs> Excuse me. I just mitered it because I don't like to see the extra, um, like right here, you can see it. So if I would have mitered that up here, you wouldn't have saw that extra, but it's not a big deal. You can't see it unless I point it out. Um, it's not a big deal. All right, so let's glue this one down. And this is what I was talking about when I said some people like to put an extra piece to cover all the chipboard. I can't be bothered with that. Cannot be bothered. This is a little bit longer than 12 inches, so um, when you have your paper open, you're going to have a quarter, almost a quarter of an inch on either side. I was okay with that because I didn't want a paper piece and I covered the middle. Um, so if you are bothered by that, then you need to make three separate pieces to cover here. Then you have the paper piece to cover your, your inside spine and then the piece over here. Um, I just went with bigger borders. That was so much easier. Okay. So you want to go ahead and put your pattern piece of paper, which would be, um, I did three, actually I did three and an eighth just to get this tiny border on, on the top and bottom. But if you want the quarter of an inch all the way around, then you'll do the three inches. But I like three and an eighth because I don't like my top borders to be that much. The side borders, I didn't care. Um, so that's what I did. And I can show you that real fast because I'm already late. So um, what do I want this book to be? I didn't have a paper collection for this one. Um, let's use our scraps from from what? What is this collection? From the photo play, um, those summer days. Let's use one of our scraps from there. So we're gonna do three and an eighth by twelve. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. I like this. I love this paper here. It is so cute. So see what I'm saying? It um, gives you that border on either side. If you cut it at three, it'll give you a bigger border. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to give this book as a gift. So I'm going to glue this down. Again, glue or square tape does not matter. Okay. 
I'm just going to go ahead and glue all of it because I'm fast enough. Um, if you are a slower crafter, don't glue all of it. But I'm just going to line it up. I kind of know where it goes. And voila. And if it does really bother you, you can add your washi tape there. You can add um, this collection had little words with it. You can add the words down the side to make it look like, um, you know, you didn't want to have a border. You can put another piece of paper. Um, say you have a pink like piece like this. Put that pink there on either side. Who's going to know? But you. Okay. So adhere. And again, let's find those marks and... Oh, this is what I should have said. If your paper is directional, you want to pay attention to the direction. Um, or your seam may be on front. For me, if it's on front or back, it doesn't matter. So some people it might. Let's just watch your direction. And it's not quite dry, so I'm getting some bubbles. All you have to do is smooth it back out. It's just because the paper is fighting you because it wants to stay straight and you're trying to fold it. So just let it dry. I say that as I keep messing with it. So I'm just going to kind of go on my bowl holder. If you have a uh, cheaper paper, you're going to rip it. So use quality paper. Okay. This thing's being stubborn. Honestly, I don't mind if there's bubble. It's just the spine. You're gonna, it's gonna be covered. Okay. And then you're going to either glue or score tape your book right in the center, like so. That's it. That's the whole book. One hour and five minutes. And again, like I said, um, keep all your little scraps. These are going to make your tags, your inserts, um, like these little pieces here. And again, I just used the scraps from the paper collection when I was making these measurements to make these little um, tags. There's no specific measurements. And then you still have these pieces. So um, yeah, use your scrap that you have left. So three sheets of cardstock. And there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.